<laughs> Hi, Mike, Twin Circle Farm. We got a project today. So this is going to take a few days, but um, it's kind of one of the bigger projects you do on a farm. We're going to build some cattle handling facilities. Got a really nice drawing. We'll try to throw up notes and see how close to the drawing we wind up. But we're going to take, um, basically, you guys saw in the previous video, we'd cleaned up the, the head chute, the squeeze chute. We're going to take that. We're going to build some wooden cattle handling fencing down here and clean up all of this whole corner so we can handle both the cattle and the pigs. So come along with us. Today we're going to be organizing, moving some stuff out, removing fencing, moving the animals around a little bit. But hopefully this gives us a nice easy way to be able to load or handle animals either way. Follow along. Thanks for watching. So I know this video is going to be over a few days. I'll probably do some breakout videos for you but there's the plans sketched out trying to build a bud box in that lower right corner so we're definitely not focused too much on the plan more the terrain that's another thing I want to note as we're building this is a terrain following fence not a residential horizontal leveled out fence there's our cattle So there was a lot of overgrowth. That's a woven wire fence that was in there on T-posts, stretched between two H braces. We use this as our main corral, starting most of our animals out. We had two electric wires run on both sides at about the 12 inch and probably about, I don't know, 48 inches. They were for the pigs and then for the smaller cattle when they first show up. Just kind of train on the electric fence. We're going to do that differently. We'll go into that later. So a lot of removing the old fence, correcting, cleaning things up. See, we've rolled up some woven wire there. I like this method of pulling T-posts. You can get on the stud side with the edge of a bucket. They pop right up. Straightening out some divots left by the animals and some erosion. The ground over here was really packed. It was kind of interesting. When we drilled the fence posts in what used to be the old fence line and the old walkways for all the animals, I mean, it, it became pretty obvious to us that this ground is just hard as a rock. So when you talk about soil compaction, it's a great example. If you get out more toward the pasture area where the grasses are and where we had grown some cover crop last year, it just, the three-point mounted auger just went right in the ground like butter. So we're just setting the ends of this board. This is five-quarter board, typical decking. It's one inch thick, six inches off the ground. And we're going to consider those our high and low points, the beginning and end of that board. Not a lot of variation here. We're aiming for an average of about six to eight inches maximum. Why that low of a board? We have pigs. Most cattle people, horse people, they start at a foot. They do a five board to get the same six foot. We needed six boards. So early on, we were just trying to get a few posts started so we could string some wire or string and get everything lined up. We made some jigs by day two, smoothed out the rough edges of what our plan was. But you can see this three point post hole digger is just struggling. Now, I'm gonna caution everybody, if you do have a rear mounted PTO drive digger like this, when they bite, they will just dive down they'll choke your tractor off. So be aware, this is a dangerous tool. Keep people back and be ready to lift that tool back up. And I'm just clearing out the bottom of the hole here, but it, it literally dives down that last foot or so. Almost suctions itself down to the ground. 
So for these runs, we're doing six inch posts every 16 foot with four inch posts every eight foot. And then we're gonna stagger the boards as we put them on. Six inch posts are kind of a uh, overkill, but we also use them to hang gates. So wherever we're gonna put a six inch and we know we're hanging a gate, we go ahead and concrete that one in. The rest of these are just set. These are 10 foot long, six inch posts set about three and a half feet deep. So we've got some excess left over on the top. We're trying to get three foot or more in the ground and still have plenty of posts left to reach our six foot mark. So a lot of what we're doing is just standard laying out fence posts. We're just kind of bass backwards some of it. We want to make sure that we've got about 15 foot nine center to center. Traditional lumber, 16 foot is 16 foot one. So if we've gone uphill or downhill, we've got a couple inches in there, a few inches we can play with. Got these local big box store recommended by our sales rep. I have to tell you, we really liked them. Got two of them. They weren't expensive. Seemed pretty, pretty decent. The levels do pop out of them with pressure and the rubber bands break. So get some extra rubber bands and just be gentle with them. We also wanted to watch this uh, hawk. Didn't get to show you guys on video, but he was fishing right out of our pond, taking advantage of the breeze and hanging in the air and dive bomb. Stripped out the screw, reversing the guide handle. I just want to throw a couple tack welds on there real quick. This guide handle really needed to be a solid bar of steel so we could also use it for down pressure. We wind up bending it later in the process. But that keeps it from twisting for now. See, we've got our tight string to show us where the edge of the post should be. This is date two or three. I'm using jigs on the ground. Six inch block or a four inch block corresponding with it. About an inch, inch and a half hole. We can spray paint where I want to touch down at the center of the post hole digger. This ground was hard. Here it is, she just suddenly tell everybody back away because she just suddenly digs. So this is what it's gonna look like kind of stair stepping, small board, big board, small board, coming up the run. We got a six inch jig between the rails just again, letting the ends of the board follow the board below it. But they're not supposed to be flawless. This is terrain hugging. Simply a hardcore fence in a pin. And we can come back later and take the tops of those posts off if we want. One side done. We also reverse the swing of the 12 foot gate you just saw. We're going to add some gates in and we're going to be showing some up close video of these gate latches that we decided to go with. We started with one in the horse barn. We're really happy with it. This is the bottom leg of that L in the original drawing. Just showing the kids doing their job. They were huge help. We were able to move along a lot faster. These were our uh, chicks born here on the farm. They were born in an incubator, handled by humans pretty early, and they just loved to hang around us and the dog. 
If we're out there, they're going to be all up underfoot. Bastard pigs. These are Berkshire pigs. You, know, you can't tell they're Berkshire. They're a little muddy right now. But I wanted to notice the one pig is eating grass. Foraging grass. It's not what they eat primarily. They've got full-time access to food whenever they want it. But they do go out, they'll eat weeds and grass, and they root around and find grubs and all the rest of the stuff pigs are supposed to do. They're naturally raised here. We're gonna run electric fence down the back side of this wood fence to keep the pigs and the animals from pressing on the wrong side of the fence. But we're only gonna run two wires, one at 12 inch, and then one up right around the five foot mark. We're burying the power that goes under the gate. That's a 16 foot opening. Just a couple of pieces of the tube that you use to bury uh, wire in. It's not glued together or anything. Just pressed together, cut off to length, and then I ran two of the underground wires there carry power from this side to the other side of the gate. This section also joins our main fence. So this is also the main power for the farm fence. Got some borrowed dirt and clay from up further just to pack down there. That'll be where the gate goes. Now we're building the inside of the two alleys. Now we built them about a 16 foot width or 16 foot gates. Now the when, when I build, that means I make it about 16 foot four. I can always add a two before in there when I hang the new gate. I know that a 16 foot farm gate that you typically buy is set for a 16 foot opening so the gate's a little bit smaller. But we wanted to make sure we had a couple inches left over no matter what, if we were wrong, because we wanted to be able to get the gate latches. And a couple of these gates are gonna swing from more than one direction. So it can close off one alley or the other. This is a stretching, we've pulled tight a high tensile wire at the bottom and the top. We're just going along and installing the insulators down the wire, stapling them to the boards. That'll do two things. That'll carry the power from the barn out to the main fence and keeps the pigs down to the 12 inch mark. These guys love burrowing and rooting and pushing on things. Well, it keeps them from pushing on the wrong side of the wood boards. And then the upper one, right around chest level there, and I'm sorry, I said 60 inches earlier, right around chest level, that's so that the cattle don't do the same thing, scratching and itching and bump into it too much. So thank the local co-op. We get a lot of supplies, a lot of advice, a lot of help. These are made in Missouri. The panels that you see there linked together so they're a generic panel made out of Missouri. I'll try to post up a link to their company name. Again, we got them through our co-op. And then we also bought gates, true swinging gates. Now these tube gates are inch and three quarter tube. They are they come with, well, I'm sorry, we're back to the panels here, but they, they've got like link pins that are on one side and then the connector on the other side to make these into a, a fence. The gates we get have hinges that come with it, but they're not the through and through bolt hinges. You're gonna see those in a minute. These panels, 
This is just testing to see how they set up. Of course, you kind of got to offset them, but well, they pin together pretty quick. You can build a corral pretty easy and then pack them away, pick them up. They're lightweight. So I've got him putting in the hinges and you'll notice that they are lag bolt style hinges. They're not the through and through bolt. The bottom hinge on the gate is welded and the top hinge is a squeeze bolt. So you point the top hinge down, the bottom hinge up, and you slide the squeeze bolt up, the, the adapter bracket up onto that top pin and then tighten it up. Make sure everything's level, give it a good tighten. Then the animals can't pick the gate up from the bottom, it's pushing up on the top hinge. So you'll see both styles. This is the lag boat. You drill a 9-16 inch hole, run these in, get them leveled up. Again, bottom one faces up, top one faces down. I like to level them on the pins and then hang my gate. It's a good gate, it's a good shape. That should also be level, but we double check on the gate. I only had to make a couple little adjustments. Using a paddle bit here, kind of dinged it up on a screw, so he's drilling a little bit slower. Again, putting the bottom hinge on the bottom pin, grab the top bracket, slide it up. Should be about level already, so I'll go ahead and give it a little bit of a tighten, and then we're just gonna check swing and clearance. Now this back alley, I made it a little bit big, but we have some posts set in concrete for this, so we'll add a 4x4 four four or 1x4s or treated wood as we need to. A quick before and after, and we'll try to follow up with some up-close videos on the brackets, on hanging the gates. Just wanted to show you. We're working, trying to come up with better solutions, stress-free handling for our animals something a little bit more permanent. Really appreciate your support, all of the kind comments. We, we can't do this without you. It just, we learn so much watching other people on YouTube. You really keep us going by letting us know that you're watching us also. Thanks for your support. Keep watching.